The Newell Visiting Distinguished Scholar Program was set up by one of our alumni and designed to bring distinguished scholars to campus across all disciplines. Coming up, we'll introduce you to our Newell Scholar for this semester who brings an impressive resume. edition of GC Conversations. I'm Brittany Johnson and our guest today is our Newell Scholar, Leon Johnson. Leon, thanks so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, I wanted to do a little um, back information on our Newell Scholar program. It's actually an endowment that was set up by one of our alumni and the goal is to bring um, folks in from across disciplines, scholars as you would in the field, to uh, kind of give our students an opportunity to learn um, that extra step, to give opportunities that may not be available mm -hmm. from our faculty faculty and staff here on campus. Uh, how exactly do you play a part in that, Leon? Um, a priority for me is to understand that an institution, an academic institution, is not in isolation from the city it's situated in right. and a part of, and a city with the history of Milledgeville presents particularly rich opportunities for scholars mm -hmm. and creative thinkers. You've got a student body, you've got a faculty, you've got all kinds of in infrastructure support around the city. Had a meeting this morning with Amy Wright at the Old Capitol Museum. And every day brings with it an average of 15 to 20 conversations. And um, one of the aspects of the Newell Scholarship that I was particularly excited about was the fact that my mandate was to synchronize, was to harmonize, was to converge and see what that produced. Right, and that's something that you yourself are very passionate about in that you are uh, definitely multidiscipline, um, mm -hmm. cross-medium um, mm -hmm. is kind of your goal. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and um, mm -hmm. w what you do, what kind of your day job, I guess, is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was born in Cape Town, South Africa, so I spent the first 20 years of my life in that context. Mm -hmm. So there was uh, the context of the home in South Africa, my undergraduate experience. And so um, much of my sense of what it means to be alive and be creative in the world was formed then. And um, my, I, I moved uh, to the States in 1979, trained as a graphic designer. My first job was to design the Dukes of Hazard lunchbox. Oh, wow. Followed by the A-Team lunchbox. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> and um, uh, found myself in San Francisco designing posters for small theater companies, then being invited to audition, and then performing while I designed and did strawberry shortcake three-piece luggage. So <laughs> f right from the bat, my sense of being engaged meant, meant uh, limiting your sense of who you are in terms of uh, what your prejudices are about high art and low art. You, to, to engage for me is, is wonderful. And so uh, by the time I got to grad school, University of Iowa, I was positioned to exploit a, a really beautiful system there. I was part of a program called the Intermedia Program, one of the oldest intermedia programs in the country, Professor Hans Breder. And so under one roof, I was able to do advanced Japanese and Western paper making video, four color offset printing, performance, uh, design. And, so, uh, and that was their, their, their mandate there. And then a hop, skip, and a jump to the last three years in Detroit, a city in uh, reinvention and reimagining and a city with an incredible uh, history, wherever you care to go, art, culture, labor, writing. Uh, we had to learn to live, uh, in a way, a new way in Detroit. And um, in the space of three years, we've opened a small printing press, uh, a, s a cooking school for Detroit youth, and an event space, as well as a pop-up restaurant that, that does six, uh, six to nine dinners a month. Um, and again, in deep uh, alliance with the city and its people. And I love that. So the idea that um, the privilege of arriving in Milledgeville uh, as a Newell Scholar, and I'm invited to do that. That's my job. Um, there's no real differentiation between day job and being an educator, and I've been an educator for 25 years. Happily, I've, uh, a, a lot of those uh, divisions uh, have faded, thankfully, and it just makes one more productive, I think. 
um, just looking at the three weeks in Milledgeville, the conversations that have already unfolded are pretty extraordinary. It's amazing to see how, how far we've gone in just the few the short time that you've mm -hmm. been here, a few weeks. Um, tell us then a little bit about, um, you talked about kind of your journey through life. What are some of your passions? What are some of the things that you're bringing to not only our students, but also to the community in Milledgeville? Yeah, terrific question. I, um, again, they were forged, they were forged in living. Again, I think about, I cook three meals a day, seven days a week for my family, and I also cook professionally. And I also cook creatively. It's part of my art practice. Food is, has featured um, in, a, in, a, in a number of uh, art practices, uh, you know, forever, but very aggressively in American culture since the 50s and a group called Fluxus and uh, food happenings and food events. So that simply was forged in my mother's kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. So um, being lucky enough to be sustained by her, then learning how to cook, and cooking for my family, and then having food play a, 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 a sizable role in my pedagogy, my classrooms. Uh, first thing we did in Milledgeville with my seminar students was uh, plan the dinners, public dinners. And um, what, what I love about that in terms of your earlier questions about uh, and, and references to interdisciplinarity is that uh, I get to work with farmers. I'm meeting, this week I'm meeting the hunters uh, who hunt on the Andalusia property to see what's coming in the spring that we can use to cook dinners with. I get to talk to chefs. I'm working with GCSU uh, faculty in ceramics making the dinner bowls. Um, Sandra Trujillo uh, and her students showed the prototypes last night after three weeks. We've got prototypes. And um, bringing in uh, chefs to collaborate. So again, it's, as a model, um, I wouldn't be able to say there's, uh, there's any part of that particular passion more important than the other, but a passion, yeah. Um, and paper. <laughs> I love paper. Making paper. Um, I'm a bookbinder, so I love the book. I'm very passionate about the book. First week in our class, we bound a book, 16th century journal. So um, the passions uh, that, that constitute a good life for many of us, if we're lucky enough, we get to translate it into the other aspects of our working day and life as well. Right, exactly. And as you mentioned, um, you actually are teaching a seminar class mm -hmm. for some of our students on campus. And we'll get to that in just a second and get you to tell us a little bit more about what our students are learning through that process. We'll be back in just a minute with more of this edition of GC Conversations. Get your I am so You're not sitting here. Yes, I am. <laughs> No, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. From this angle, it all makes a star. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. Show up. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy. And giving up, impossible. And then we're going to turn the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. There's nothing. I'm going to die. Go ahead, go, go, go. I'm a teacher. I make. We're back with this edition of GC Conversations, where our special guest today is Leon Johnson, who is our Newell Visiting Distinguished Scholar this semester. Um, Leon, you were talking a little bit about um, some of the things that your students have done thus far in the seminar class that you're teaching. Now, you're actually housed under the art department, but art is not your specific focus for this, correct? No. Um, and and, and that's, that's the problem worth having for me, <laughs> is what, what then constitutes the mission. Uh, the art department is, in fact, my host, um, and none of this would have been possible without uh, the faculty there and uh, Chair Bill Fisher 
in terms of uh, facilitating conversations, facilitating um, more problems mm -hmm. worth, worth uh, facing. And um, we, if, we, if I think about the range of conversations just in the, in the first few weeks, that also functions as a model to the students who might think of a seminar in the art department as having a, a, a primary alliance, say, with art history or art theory or theory of practices. And it certainly can include and does. Um, but I see the seminar as, as, as a, a, an inclusive forum. And so uh, people are welcome to sit in on the class. Students are invited to bring friends and family members or, or people uh, who their research might, might involve. And um, I have conversations uh, with faculty in history. I've got an appointment to go to special collections to look at the African-American manuscript collection, conversation with geographers, um, and now with members of the community, farmers, uh, directors of other institutions. Um, and it simply just makes for a richer way of learning and making. How would you best describe the, the course as it is and some of the things, mm -hmm. you mentioned a few of them that the students are doing, how would you best describe that um, so people kind of get an understanding of what students are, are having mm -hmm. these days? Uh, the seminar is titled Taken Aback, which has, I've always loved as a phrase that something can cause us to stop, taken aback, rethink. Um, and it focuses on the act of remembering what does that mean? Um, our, our autobiographies, our families, um, uh, approaching material we might have forgotten, the memory of place, time, uh, the memory of historical intersections, and, and that's why I'm so thrilled to be in Milledgeville. You can't walk a yard without crossing sacred, deep, complicated territory. So. Uh, the seminar invites seminarians uh, to, to be attentive to the act of remembering in place. And uh, the first week we spent, I taught everybody in the class to bind their own 16th century field guide, a journal. So uh, we do collect data. I invite people to write. I invite people in the seminar to talk, to converse. Um, and I invite people in the seminar to uh, walk. We're walking the city, we're walking, some of the students are engaged in re-mapping re their hometowns or homes, reconnecting to people they might not have spoken about, digging through photographic archives, asking questions. Uh, George Bernard Shaw, a quote that I've loved, that is central to this uh, seminar, he says, if you, have, if you find that you have skeletons in your closet, make them dance. So there's a sense of rattling around, seeing what, um, is unspoken anymore, um, and uh, see how it relates to the place you're living in or lived in. Very interesting. You brought up an interesting topic earlier in that you're opening the doors to your classroom uh, mm -hmm. for anyone to come in, mm -hmm. not necessarily just the students who signed up for that. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's one of the things we want the community to be aware of, that you can come in. Tell us when this class meets and, and why you think it's important to open it up to such a vast audience. Uh, we meet uh, in Mayfair, 202. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 5.30 to 6.45. Um, I believe as citizens, we're perfectly capable of affording, us, affording ourselves solitude or privacy when we need it. Certainly we can, um, that's a control system in the seminar as well, should we need to be in uh, private space, we can do that. But, um, I love the idea of a classroom at least occasionally becoming a town hall where the conversations can't be as uh, maybe secure and precious. They get, <laughs> they, get, they, get it, they get taken in a different direction. And so um, I've only experienced classrooms in that sense positively where, where, where there's more of a chorus occasionally of, of other voices. And um, it just, it's a richer way to be alive and, and to learn. And I consider myself part of the group learning here. I'm not, I'm not, mas I'm not a master of anything uh, other than the facilitator into these uh, questions. It's such an interesting dynamic that you bring to the table in just that, that this is not a uh, by the book, here is exactly what you're going to learn and how you're going to learn it, that you really embrace this outside of the box learning process mm -hmm. for not only 
our students, but, but for anyone that's involved mm -hmm. in your um, work here and, mm -hmm. and time as well as in Detroit. Why do you embrace that model of that it doesn't necessarily have to be the traditional open a book to chapter three and read 50 pages? Yeah. I think about my own life as a learner, as a student, and um, I have no doubt about understanding the most engaged and occasionally explosive and, 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 and difficult moments in the classroom or in the context of the academy um, included other people and they tended to be vi more vivid uh, as more people joined. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I guess it's important that I'm, uh, I'm not suggesting we fill the room with people who are merely mildly curious. But people come with curiosity and an intention of participating. And um, I, I think that's uh, pr pretty terrific. And um, you mentioned Detroit. I think it's the reason why I find it such a compelling place to, to, to live make work and work in, in social engagement projects with communities, um, I think it's simply the only way you can sustain a city, uh, sustain a community, sustain a block, sustain a business, sustain a classroom. Um, I love uh, a porous arrangement, and I love being surprised by who shows up and the priorities they bring. Their priorities aren't less important than my syllabus. Um, so uh, I love keeping the classroom agile and alive to that possibility. One of the keys that I get from the conversations that I've had with you is that collaboration is really key for you. And I know that you're bringing in a lot of other guest scholars mm -hmm. throughout your process. And we're going to touch on some of those and let you invite our community to those coming up in just a second. Leon, stick with us. We'll be right back with this edition of GC Conversations. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs, just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover keytar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill, donate stuff, create jobs. And we're back with this edition of GC Conversations with our guest, the Newell Scholar for this semester, uh, Leon Johnson. Leon, we've talked a little bit about your seminar class for students. And uh, one other aspect of this is that you're actually bringing in um, some other scholars, some folks that you've worked with through your processes. Um, why is that important? Again, that collaboration that's so important to you. Mm -hmm. um, one of my, as, you know, I mentioned earlier I was trained as a graphic designer and uh, I cherish uh, those years, simply for me, uh, the act of designing um, is collaborative. Whether you're trying to design a system for clean water, or you're doing a poster on world hunger, or a CD cover for a band, I, um, uh, I believe the act of designing is critically important, certainly as we move into a century of uh, some s serious needs. Deficiencies. I think the design community and design culture uh, have, have some serious work awaiting them. And I believe those solutions are incubated and applied uh, at its best collectively with an intimate uh, understanding of need, of materiality, and uh, use. So um, for me, uh, the, the design 
process uh, works best then. And simply applied to learning the same, uh, the same set of principles, um, I cherish uh, destabilizing my own comfort zone when there is a problem at hand. Um, I don't seek an answer. I seek process. Um, I don't seek security. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to feel the heat, whether it's uh, thinking about a new dish or a new class or um, a printing problem or thinking about how a city like Detroit, how I can participate with a community that um, for generations have been working passionately and, and powerfully regardless of what happened, say, with uh, capital and financial institutions, the automobile industry. The people have always been there and they've always been working there. So in a way, there's nothing new. It's critical that anybody joining the conversation or the mission uh, connects on a deep level with those people who have been there already. So in, in thinking about what collaboration means, it might be uh, it might be more important. It might, in fact, be a sacred concept of approaching and, and meeting communities who have been working tirelessly in the act of living well or living in, in decent ways and working hard. Um, if that approaches collaboration, sign me up. Can we translate that into the classroom or the boardroom or uh, any number of, of issues facing any institution in the 21st century? I believe we can. Uh, I believe it's faith-based, trust-based, and I think it's addictive. I think it's, it's, it's compelling. Once the collective uh, collaborative system is applied and starts producing, and by producing, again, I don't mean answers, I'm happy to fail a lot. And I think in pursuit of a solution, we, we need a fair amount of messy failure. And if we claim it, we're, we're on a pretty good track for a, probably a healthy, uh, eventually a healthy solution. So um, yeah, collaboration, I think, is, 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 is both uh, a science and a kind of sacred mystery in a way. We, we, don't, we, we, we arrive almost inevitably clumsily at the point of, <laughs> we have to relearn a language, we have to relearn trust, how, how do we listen uh, carefully. So uh, yeah, it's remarkable. And you actually are bringing, as we said, some collaborators here mm -hmm. to campus. Talk to us a little bit about some of those events and activities and folks that you're bringing here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's look at the, uh, I'm, uh, I'm bringing in a chef trained in Hong Kong, uh, Jonathan Kung, who uh, runs a pop-up restaurant in Detroit called Kung Food. And um, he'll be coming to meet with my seminar students, meet with the community, and we'll be doing two dinners together. One a Hong Kong style noodle house pop-up and one a formal dinner for eight at uh, Andalusia, Flannery O'Connor's farm. He will also do a lecture called The Art of the Pop-up to whoever wishes to join our class. And so again, the production of uh, conversations. Hopefully, w w um, to get back to your question, once Jonathan leaves and then once I leave, Part of the wish is not that we've had a terrific time and, and people have enjoyed the seminar, but we've actually left blueprints in place that people can adapt and use and change. And so some continuity is critical. I'm bringing in um, Professor Ian Kerr, one of the founders of a group called Spurs, uh, deeply interested in design problems, ecologies, um, food, cultures, sustainability. He'll be doing a one-week residency. I'm bringing in a Kresge foundation winner, composer, and musician, Joel Peterson, who will be uh, doing a lecture on uh, the incredible musical heritage of Detroit, and a solo performance, and a meeting with my seminar. So um, I'm very careful not to consider these visiting artists, people who fly in for a night and fly out after a chat. They, they, they're here as much time as we can muster, and they engage on all those levels. Yes, very engaged. And you yourself will actually have several open presentations um, for folks to come out to. Um, one was February 7th, and then we'll have some more that will be collaborative with um, the First Friday events in downtown Milledgeville. Um, why did you choose that time to do your open presentations? Again, uh, we have uh, people who are coming out and who are curious and looking at things, and uh, it's simply an efficient way for us to uh, partner with uh, all kinds of uh, citizens uh, from a range of communities. And so um, 
uh, again, uh, the privilege of, of having people who might not have made it out to a scheduled lecture event. It, it hardly sounds, you know, compelling. <laughs> um, you know, that, that we might be able to be surprised by who shows up and then we might be able to have some conversations because I'm going to keep the presentations relatively lean so that there's an opportunity for, for some conversation afterwards. And so I look forward to meeting people again in a new context. What can folks expect from your open presentations? I'm going to be talking, I, I think I have three scheduled uh, presentations. Um, the first presentation I'm going to be uh, looking in many ways, uh, your, your questions will focus, will, will, foc will bring focus to that lecture. H how, did we, how did we build social engagement projects in Detroit? Um, why is it critical to rethink the way we live together and build uh, solutions and wonders and entertainments and events worth having? And um, so that'll be the, the focus of the, the first lecture. The second lecture, um, I'm going to involve some of my students and the third lecture, in all likelihood, will have at least participation from one of the visiting uh, scholars I'm bringing in. And who knows? I mean, it's months away, so we'll see. Right. Well, now, you've brought so much to the table for not only here on campus, but also for folks in the community. How can folks get in touch with you um, if they want to be a part of some of your processes or if they would like to collaborate with you? What's the best way to do that? I, I would invite people just to contact the art department, mm -hmm. and um, we could facilitate. I'm happy to travel. I'm happy to meet people. And um, uh, that's, that's the way I would encourage them to connect. Great. Well, and all of these events and information will be on our website, gcsu.edu. If you're interested in coming out to hear Leon um, speak, to be involved in the pop-up restaurants, any genre of the things that he will be covering while he's here, just check out our website, gcsu.edu, for all that information. Leon, thanks so much for coming in. So interesting and such a vast array of specialties that you bring to the table. We're excited to have you here. A pleasure to be here. Thank you. All right, that's it for this edition of GC Conversations. You can join us again next time.